What's happening everybody? It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, and I am honored to be here with you guys to give my personal opinion and review for Spike Lee's Black Klansman. Now, if you have not seen the film yet, please stop it here, go see the film and come back because there will be spoilers. I don't want to spoil this for many who have not seen it. I know there are people who don't care about spoilers, and but there are some, so for those who have seen it, please go and come back. Also, if you have not checked it out, please check out my interview with writer Kevin Wilmot, who is one of the writers on the film. And we got a chance to talk in depth about a lot of things that you are going to see and that I ended up seeing in the film. And I want to talk to you about it right now. The best way I can start this off is by saying Spike Lee has hit it out the park again. Everything we've seen in TV, the TV spots where they give the four stars film of the year is very impactful. All of those hold true and reign true because of the subject matter and how Lee brings it to the forefront. I know there are many people who know me personally and like, yo, you're just going to say that because you were in Chirac with him and you worked with him directly. I've been a Spike Lee fan since I was a child. So that doesn't matter whether I've worked with him before or not. What matters is the, the piece of work, the project I went to view and I was in my seat captivated from beginning to end. John David Washington as Ron Stallworth is phenomenal. You see him channeling the energy, the emotion, the life of everything he had to bring to bring this real life person to the big screen, not a character made up, a real life individual, which if you don't understand the story, the plot of this, the story is about a cop, Stallworth, who successfully infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan of the local chapter. And when you see how it happens, we see some in trailers, you know, we see the phone call, you know, we see the different interactions, but then you see how uh, Philip Zimmerman's Adam Driver's character has to become Stallworth and he has to learn about him. In the process, you find out about Driver being Driver's character being Jewish and how he is seemingly doesn't have much of a problem with what the Klan says, but he says it does eat him, but he doesn't show it, you know, out. Uh, one of the things that really hits home with this is the police violence, the police brutality against black people. Now, I know a lot of people will be like, yo, this, these are just people making it up. The numbers show that this, that, and the third. Well, numbers show a lot. But at the same time, this is what we're seeing the most. This is what we're consistently hearing about. And granted, social media makes things happen so much in this day and age. But back then it was happening and nobody did anything about it. There were officers on forces who just let it happen. Like, well, those are niggers and it doesn't matter. There is an incident where Laura, uh, I can't remember her last name, pardon my, pardon my blank in my memory, uh, Patrice, she is taking back Stokely Carmichael, who's played by Corey Hawkins. I'll get to that in a minute. She was in a car with her friend and just taking him back to his hotel after a, you know, an event where he spoke at. Well, we see a cl we see a cutback where she is pulled over by a white police officer who happens to work in the same precinct with Stallworth and he's harassing him and the other cops have guns drawn on him and everything. He's called them niggers left and right. And then he proceeds to sexually assault and molest Patrice and her other black female friend. And uh, Hawkins character is Carmichael is like, yo, let him go. And then the cops, you know, they, they push on him and push on the other brothers that they're with. And he tells them, make sure you get this nigger out of town by daylight, because if not, you're all going to jail. And that might sound like an idle threat in many situations to many people, but that is something that had happened. Now, I got to go back to Corey Hawkins and Stokely Carmichael. We have him in like two quick scenes, but the one main scene in which he's in, where he is brought in by the Colorado Black Student Union, which is run by Patrice, he's brought in to speak. And he's under the new name of Kwame Ture, because of course, after the whole Black Panther thing, he changed his identity, went to Africa, came back. The speech that he gave was so powerful, so riveting, where you couldn't help but to just be in awe of it. And not just the speech itself, the performance, the delivery by Corey Hawkins. That was something that I was just beyond amazed with. Um, I've seen how Spike works when people have to give a long monologue of speech. For me personally, was seeing John Cusack do that in Chirac. But the way Corey delivered this, I don't know if it was fully a Carmichael speech or some was ad-libbed and added on, but the emotion, the beads of sweat, the way you could feel like the man playing the character is coming through was just riveting, okay? We saw a lot about how the clan operates and that being David Duke played by Topher Grace, who by the way, did a phenomenal job. Um, 
it's always baffling to me when we see white men, white women play these characters. We know they're not of a racist, they don't have a racist bone in their body, as we would say, but they play these characters that are so despicable. You, you just can't stand them. They are so just evil and sadistic and you're wondering how does a person channel that without bringing it bringing the part of themselves into it but then you remember that we're all actors we just play make-believe and pretend for a living and so that's what you do it's what you're trained to do it's a part of the arts and the crafts and it was beautiful um to watch his interactions with star Wars first over the phone because that's how he met him again he had never seen him until later on in the film which by the way in real life in david duke's book he vehemently denies, which we all know is true. Yo, you got you got duped, dog. You got you got stupid. You, you thought you knew how black folks talk, because that was one of the things they say in this. Um, even the police chief said it. There's a difference between how black people talk and is how white people talk. And Ron Star Wars character, Ron Star Wars, is like, what what what, what, do, what do you mean? What is there a difference? He's like, some of us do speak good English. Some speak jive, of course, in the 70s. But there's that is something that happens today. And I wanna take a quick break to say this. The term very well-spoken is not a compliment. It is actually an insult. To say a black man or a black woman is so well-spoken, it is, it is saying it in the realm of, oh, I didn't think they could speak well. I didn't think they'd be able to talk and deliver on a level that everyone can understand. And so that happens in the film. Also, David Duke tells Star Wars over the phone, he would know if he was talking to a nigger, as he said, because of the way niggers say their R's as opposed to white people. He says that niggers say r and white people say R. And as I'm listening to this, I'm like, yo, people do believe that. And the fact of the matter is there are many other races that talk the exact same way. You know, many races say R. Many races say R. So how is that the letter pronunciation a way you can discern who is what skin tone color and skin tone? Nonetheless, we go forward. Uh, David, John David Washington's character, Ron Stallworth, ends up meeting David Duke in person, but this time he is himself as an undercover police officer, while Adam Driver's character is being fully ingrained and initiated into the Klan, which they call the organization, by the way. The Klan members want to call it the organization, but it, it's known as the Ku Klux Klan. Stalwart even receives his membership card, which is the most craziest thing possible. It's, it's surreal. But also, when, when, when drivers in the initiation ceremony, after all the men are inducted into the Klan, the women come to celebrate in the Senate Third, they play the controversial film, The Birth of a Nation. Now, I know a lot of people think about the Nate Parker version of it, but this one is the one that was talking about the resurgence of the Klan, how they were just dominant over black people, and they made black people look, call them monkeys and niggers and spooks and they were doing a lot of blackface and minstrels just to mock black people. And this is the film that Woodrow Wilson showed in the White House as the president. Never forget that this film was played in the White House. There's a lot, speaking of the White House, there's a lot of symbolism and similarities to things that are going on today with this current administration. Now I know people will sit there and watch it and say, oh, he just wanted to jab at the president. He just wanted to make fun of him here and there. But the problem is, you don't have to make fun of them when these things actually happen. These words were actually used. David Duke was always saying, America first. David Duke was saying, make America great again. These are things that have been said, and so people can't really get upset about that. You have the incident where uh, Felix, who is one of the Klansmen that uh, Driver's character first meets, his wife, Connie, is so all about, I want to kill niggers and this, that, and the third. And so she has to take a bomb to try to blow her up, blow Patrice up, and then blow the student union up. And it's just, it's riveting because it's like, this really happens and ha has happened. It happens today, yes, in smaller towns, and sometimes not even smaller towns, in just minimal suburbs it happens, and even different communities, but this happens on a daily basis, and it is very upsetting because again, we need to learn how to study history. 
study the good and the bad, the ignorance and intolerance that we went through, especially in this country, because we're at this rate, we're repeating it. And there's an old saying that those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. There are those who may want to repeat history, but there are those who are like, this needs not to happen again because we're better than that. Another powerful scene that comes in the movie, uh, comes in the film, is by the way of the legendary actor Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte tells this powerful, gripping, and emotional story of a mentally challenged young black man who was accused of rape, couldn't do, by no means could do it, accused of rape, the jury made a verdict in four minutes, then people drug him out of the courthouse with a chain on his neck, proceeded to stab him in the street as they were driving him through the street, cut off his testicles, cut off his fingers, and, and even poured corn oil on him and had a bonfire and kept dropping the body in it. Then afterwards, they sold parts of the body as souvenirs. That is horrible, but it is real. And that is one of the things I thank Spike Lee about for this film because it pulls no punches. It doesn't make light of it. It doesn't say, oh, this little bit happened, let's go forward. It tells you what happened. I'm sorry, recanting that story has all, I'm trying to hold back tears because it was so emotional for me just to hear it. I've heard of, I've heard of horrors. I have family who was from Alabama and Mississippi respectively. They have seen horrors. They have lost friends and family members to these atrocities. And as you go for it, you see how eventually it all comes out that uh, Driver's character, uh, Philip Zimmerman, isn't Zimmerman, Zimmerman isn't a isn't a Ron Starworth? He's actually a cop. How Ron Starworth is the cop, and things like that. And then at the end, you know, the police chief does something that's really even more upsetting. The police chief says, "Okay, this investigation is done. I want you to destroy all evidence of this. I want you to get rid of all of this. N nobody needs to know this happened. This lets you know how much of a cover up." even law enforcement, and I'm not saying by any means that all law enforcement is dirty. If anybody knows me, you know I have great lifelong friends who are in law enforcement. So I will never sit there and say all oh, law enforcement is dirty and just bad and horrible. But in this case to say, people don't need to know about this. You tell the other white guy telling the only black officer in the precinct that he needs to get rid of this so nobody can know. Why are you trying to hide this? This is what is happening. People need to know this. We go to the end of the film and um, we see how the marches were happening in that time in 67 and whatnot in the 70s. And we're fast forwarded to just last year. The horrible incidents in Charlottesville, the marches, the Jews will not replace us, you know, white lives matter, all this and the third. And then we're treated for lack of better words to that gut-wrenching, just heart-ripping scene of the car that plowed through people and killed Heather Haley in Charlottesville. And it is a reminder that yes, this is still happening. This is not uh, a one-time incident. This isn't just something that's isolated. This is still happening and it's happening on a grand scale. And it even went to show how the president said, you have people causing destruction on both sides. There were mighty fine people on both sides. You can never say there are mighty fine people marching with white supremacists, neo-Nazis, hate groups. It's not possible. You share that ideology if you are marching with them. You march because you believe in the same things, the same principles and values. And this movie showed all that. Um, I literally, after I got out the theater, I had to hit up Spike Lee personally. You know, we were corresponding through uh, email and text. And I told him, man, thank you for this, man. It was super powerful and I appreciate it. And he was like, it's all I can do. This is real and I need to tell people. And I highly recommend you go see it. Black, white, Asian, Asian, Latinx, no matter what, go see this film. If you are living in America today, if you have any, if you don't fully understand what some of the things that have gone on, this is from a man's actual memoirs. This is not a made up story. This is not fictitious. This is real. This is going to catch you. It is going to hold you from the opening scene until the credits roll. And you will not know how to feel because you'll just be like, wow. 
you'll be like, whoa, that hit me hard and I didn't expect it to. And I hope that it'll do the same for you. So let me know your thoughts if you've seen this movie in the comments below, okay? Like, subscribe, click on the notification bell. Did you go see Black, Black Klansman? Did you enjoy it? Have you not seen it yet? What are you expecting? Are you scared to go see the film? Because there are some, there have been tales all over the country, literally, of white people who have walked out of the film because they couldn't handle it. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So let me know your thoughts below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington, okay? Join my supervillain squad on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. I'm going to put up a whole bunch of interviews from Black Lightning, the Black Lightning cast that I got at San Diego Comic Con. They'll only be exclusive through Patreon and so much more. So I want you to be a part of that, okay? I will holler at you guys later. Take care. I'm out of here. Peace.